It is currently 4.48 a.m. in the morning, and um, I'm in bed with Jesus, and I have to share with you guys this amazing revelation that the Lord just gave me. By a strange occurrence of events, I've been reconnected with someone that I worked with from 2010 to 2013, and I'm helping this person through deliverance and spiritual warfare, and I, it all just kind of spontaneously happened last night, again, in a sudden occurrence of events and conversations that clearly were led by God. So we, as I'm helping her understand certain things, she tells me that she had a dream about a white horse with wings okay so so something that we could identify and and find illustration in the form of pegasus right that in her dream the white horse the white winged horse came down like a star came down and then turned into a cat and came and told her that the person she married was not the one not the one that god had for her right and so i was like oh my gosh i was like that's amazing that was pegasus because that's like the lord's been talking to me about what he's been using is Pegasus and he's been directing me to what I know is Pegasus right and he's been talking to me about Pegasus I don't really know exactly what he's been trying to say but now I do he gave me the revelation tonight praise God and I want to share it with you because it's so beautiful so I tell her that's so amazing and that you know that was her um you know angel that was that was an angel coming to help her be in the will of God basically so as I'm looking more into Pegasus because I'm just fascinated and God's giving me more and more confirmation to this whole Pegasus thing I come across this video that I'm about to share with you, and it's just so beautiful. So God revealed to me through this that we have our own, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have our own white horse in heaven. And um, it's similar to the white horse that Jesus rides, but our horse is smaller. And our horse, we each have a horse that has its own individual name. So I just thought that was the most amazing thing. And now I understand that it's not actually um, what God was showing, was showing me was not necessarily Pegasus. Although, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with Pegasus aside from the secular world has and the myth mythological world has perverted what pegasus actually is and has turned it into a god because they pervert everything right and make everything a point of perversion everything that god has given to us that is actually beautiful and good they have created a perverted form of it but um it's actually a representation of our horse our horses in heaven and so check out this testimony when i left the church in my childhood around 16 years old after i realized just how abusive their teachings were i wish i could say that it was all great immediately after that but it wasn't <laughs> i went through sometimes elation at learning new things of how I didn't have to be controlled anymore, of how I could have grace with parts of myself that were previously unforgivable. And, uh, but in the middle of all that, when I was by myself, I'd also experienced this really deep, low, dark feeling. And I asked God, can you help redefine me? <laughs> because without this group of people that I thought was going to support me my whole life, I'd really like a new definition of who I am and what I'm supposed to be doing. And also I have this gift to see in the spirit visiting heaven since I was 12 years old. All of that started in the church and all of this I had brought to that church and uplifted the church members and now that was gone. I wasn't telling anybody about what I was seeing. I also felt like maybe my gift was fading. It was a really scary time. And God gave me a vision that I wasn't ready to accept just yet. It came on a day when I was visiting heaven and I asked God, okay, what is this about names? Because when I ask angels to tell me their name, they'll give me sometimes a name that's difficult for me to pronounce. So it's clearly not an English-based name. And uh, maybe it's four syllables and it's got, you have to say the vowel just right and nobody will let me give them a nickname. <laughs> I mean, good for the angels, but <laughs> I, I say, God, I can tell names are important. Can you tell me, are there true names? Because Jesus' horse has a name, and you haven't even told me his name, because I won't be able to comprehend it. It's too full of glory. So I just called him Jesus' horse. And God said, Dakota, I will tell you your true name. Are you ready? And I go, he said to me, actually, it kind of came more as a feeling, but as I tried to translate it, it came across as something like fire breather, truth speaker. And before I was really ready to comprehend what that meant, God told me, I want you to take your war horse, your, your horse that you've been given in heaven, and I want you to go on a mission with him. So I did. I met with Shakisha, so I got to jump on board, and <laughs> he is an amazing horse. He he looks like he's maybe like a smaller version of Jesus' horse, uh, although his wings are just absolutely magnificent. And I'll have to do another one on Jesus' Jesus's horse at another point. Anyway, I jumped on Shakisha, and, uh, and we started from the throne room in heaven, and I could tell God had told Shakisha where to go. Shakisha flew out of the throne room. We were in space and we quickly started descending towards Earth. And as we go down, I think we we stepped into a vision. So it wasn't so much actually seeing Earth. It was something that God wanted us to see that represented Earth. And as we got closer, I realized that we were heading towards a group of buildings. And some of the buildings were half built, like a construction crew had stopped midway. And others were fully built and some only had the foundation. And as we almost landed, I think Shakish just kept hovering. I said something and wherever I said something, it sent energy, like a, like a blast of energy towards these buildings. And some of the buildings didn't withstand the blast and started to collapse. And some did, I mean, just fine. Like it just moved through and everything stayed standing, but it, but it did great. And, uh, and as we went around and I saw things falling based on what I said, 
oh my gosh, I just got another interpretation of what this means, which is actually so much better than I originally thought. To me, it looked like buildings, like church buildings, oh gosh, might come down if they had been based on the wrong thing. And when I say the wrong thing, I mean lifting up human ego, whether that be the pastor's or people's ego, versus God's grace of freely accepting this gift and knowing your life comes and, and ends, but actually will not end. It will just continue on with God and only God's power, manifested through Jesus. My, oh my gosh, I just realized it's such a relief. I thought that the stuff I was going to say would tear down the buildings that were not founded on God, were founded on the needs of the flesh. And now I have a much better interpretation. I just got acquainted with the, the term strongholds. Strongholds are structures of thinking that maybe dark forces can get a hold of. Like, so if you're used to thinking about the world in a way of like, I got to get them before they get me, that's a stronghold that can hold a lot of bitterness and uh, it can let some not good things in there too. It's kind of like cracking the door open to negativity. And what I'm so relieved to think about is I think my vision meant my words get to break the strongholds that are not good. I can't tell you what a relief that is because I don't want to, I don't want to hurt. I don't want to hurt churches, <laughs> but I will <laughs> speak in a way that releases people from strongholds that have hurt them. So if you're still here and you're resonating with this message, um, just know that my intention is to speak God's grace and God's glory. And through his grace alone, this will not become something that supports my ego, but continues to share who he is. Thank you for being on this journey with me. <laughs> Thank you. But I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you are too.